Tonight, the life-threatening winter storm as we come on the air. Blizzard conditions, several states, the Northeast bracing for this. New York's governor tonight declaring a state of emergency already. At this hour, the blinding snow, potentially dangerous flooding and record cold moving in. Severe storms in the Midwest already, and then from Florida to the Carolinas all the way up the East Coast. Thousands of flights canceled or delayed. Chicago's O'Hare Airport ordering a ground stop for a time. And the wind chills now coming 20 to 65 degrees below zero. Alex Perez live in Chicago. Rob Marciano timing this out tonight and tomorrow. Also tonight, the new video just in. The U.S.-led airstrikes against Iranian-backed militants, the Houthi rebels in Yemen. The U.S. now firing more than 80 Tomahawk cruise missiles, dozens of targets hit. And what the White House is saying tonight about concerns over a wider war. Mary Bruce with late reporting. The new images not seen before from inside the cabin of that Alaska Airlines flight, just moments after the door plug tore off at 16,000 feet, leaving that huge hole in the cabin. The haunting images of what it was like in the rows near that hole in the plane. Just three days to go until the Iowa caucuses, and this is what they're dealing with. Tonight, Ron DeSantis still campaigning. Nikki Haley had to call off in-person events. Donald Trump isn't there. But Trump does lead in the polls by 30 points there. A win by that margin would be historic. But it all depends on who turns out. Rachel Scott is there tonight. A U.S. Navy chopper crashing during a training mission, the race to rescue six crew members. The deadly collision on the tracks, the second deadly collision in the same spot just this week. What authorities are saying tonight. The new warning from the CDC tonight about COVID, flu and respiratory illness, what they're seeing right now. The recall tonight from Quaker Oats now growing more than two dozen products added from cereals to granola bars. The new coach tonight for the Patriots already making history and six sisters sharing one dream who are our persons of the week. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us as we near the end of another week together. We do begin tonight with this dangerous winter storm hitting right now. In fact, the storm is so sweeping, 49 states are under alerts at this hour. New York's governor tonight declaring a state of emergency in western New York with this storm coming, followed by the lake effect snow machine there. The National Guard called up, prepared for blizzard conditions and what they're calling life-threatening cold behind it in several states. Wind chills, look at this, from 20 to 65 degrees below zero. The blizzard warnings in the Midwest, snow across the Great Lakes tonight, a half a foot in some areas outside Chicago. Severe storms in the south, then heavy rain into the mid-Atlantic and the northeast, with rivers already dangerously high. Montana, by the way, in the blizzard zone. These are pictures there. Wind chills 50 to 65 degrees below zero on the way next. Heavy snow, dangerous driving in the Chicago metro area, a semi jackknifing. This is I-90 traffic brought to a halt. Downed trees and power lines in Skokie, Illinois tonight. Blinding snow and bitter cold in Des Moines, Iowa. Of course, the caucus is there just three days away now. And look at this, the de-icing of the planes at Chicago's O'Hare Airport today, a ground stop for a time there. More than 2,000 flights canceled nationwide tonight. Rob Marciano timing this out and Alex Perez leading us off from Chicago. Tonight, a massive storm bringing blizzard conditions, whipping winds and life-threatening cold to millions. From the Midwest to New York, where the governor has declared a state of emergency for western New York ahead of up to three feet of snow. It could be falling at a heavy rate of two to three inches an hour. It'll affect visibility, uh, blizzard-like conditions. Driving treacherous today across the Chicago area. You can see the snow is already piling up in many areas. They are expecting a foot or more officials in many places telling drivers to stay off the roads if possible. This tree crashing into a home. Winds up and the heavier snowfall right now is causing a little bit of mayhem throughout the village. More than 1,000 flights canceled today at Chicago airports, more than 2,000 nationwide. Nearly every state is on alert for extreme weather. In New Jersey, where the Passaic River is already at major flood stage, residents are bracing for another round of heavy rain and high wind. In Patterson, one family rescued from their home. You can see those firefighters there standing and literally carrying these residents off of the steps over onto the ladder of their truck. And right behind this system, a blast of Arctic air headed as far south as Texas. 
Tomorrow night's NFL wildcard game in Kansas City could be one of the coldest in history with a wind chill of negative 23. Arrowhead Stadium now setting up warming stations for fans. And David, the concern here is far from over. The snow and wind return tonight, impacting visibility on the roads. And then the deep freeze, temperatures are plunging by Sunday. The wind chill here will feel like 20 below zero. David? So many states are going to feel this. Alex Prez leading us off tonight. Alex, thank you. Let's get right to senior meteorologist Rob Marciano to time all this out for us. Hey, Rob. Hi, David. This thing's really winding up now, and that rain's going to turn back to snow in Chicago. Blizzard conditions in some areas will continue, and what this storm is pulling down in its wake is nothing short of jarring. Look at all the alerts that are out. We got the wind alerts, those wind chill alerts. That's a huge chunk of the country. Every state, as you mentioned, but Arizona has something going on. All right, the low is going to push across Chicago. The backside of that brings in the cold air, and that heavy rain is going to be pushed up across the northeast as well, but with some coastal flooding, with some wind as well. Not quite as bad as what we had earlier in the week, but certainly the potential for seeing some flooding. And then the low continues to amplify as it crosses the Great Lakes, and the wind's going to stream off the Great Lakes tomorrow. One to three feet of lake effect snow through the day tomorrow, through tomorrow night, and does include parts of the Buffalo game as well. And look at these wind chills across the midsection of the country, 20, 30, 40 degrees below zero. There's Kansas City. Those sort of wind chills will give you frostbite to the exposure skin in just 10 minutes. David got to take it seriously this weekend. Rob Marciano with us yet again tonight on another storm. Rob, we sure do appreciate it. We turn now to the other major news this Friday night. New images coming in now on this U.S. led military action against Iranian backed militants in Yemen, the Houthi rebels. After months of attacks on shipping in the Red Sea, the White House tonight on whether this brings a wider war now. And of course, are more strikes coming? The U.S. and five allies, including the U.K., unleashing a wave of Tomahawk cruise missiles and fighter jets, striking dozens of targets across 28 locations, hitting weapons, radar, surveillance systems, and unmanned vehicles. The Houthis tonight immediately vowing revenge, a sea of protesters gathering images from Yemen's capital today. Tonight, President Biden saying he's delivered the message to Iran. Here's our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce, tonight. Tonight, the U.S. launching a second round of airstrikes on Iranian-backed militants in Yemen. The Pentagon saying it's part of an effort to further degrade the Houthi rebels' ability to attack commercial ships in the Red Sea and a direct response to today's launch by the militants of another missile targeting but missing a ship in the region. It comes after the U.S.-led assault hit 60 Houthi targets across 28 locations Thursday, the largest U.S. strike in the Middle East in years. A wave of 80 Tomahawk cruise missiles launched from Navy ships and a submarine, backed by fighter jets. Tonight, the Houthis vowing revenge as a sea of protesters took to the street in Yemen's capital, burning American and Israeli flags. British forces joining the U.S. assault, releasing video of explosions destroying Houthi facilities. The Pentagon saying they degraded the Houthis' capabilities, taking out weapons depots, radar and surveillance systems, as well as attack drones, hoping to cripple the militants' ability to continue terrorizing the Red Sea. New satellite images revealing the aftermath, buildings flattened. Since mid-November, the Houthis have launched at least 27 attacks, claiming they are retaliating for Israel's war against Hamas, disrupting one of the most vital shipping routes in the world. President Biden today saying the strikes were successful, adding Iran, the Houthis' backers, got the message. I've already delivered the message to Iran. They know I'm not to do anything. But the attack is exactly the kind of escalation the White House had been hoping to avoid. Tonight, spokesman John Kirby adamant the U.S. is not in a wider war. We don't seek a war uh, in Yemen with the Houthis. We want, to, we want to see these attacks stop. But the president says he's not ruling out taking additional measures. And tonight, President Biden is standing by his defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, who, as this attack was being planned, was hospitalized, being treated for prostate cancer, something he concealed from the president for several days. But tonight, the White House says Austin was fully engaged and that he participated and that it was seamless. David. Mary Bruce with us again tonight on this. Mary, thank you. We turn now to the harrowing images not seen before from inside the cabin of that Alaska Airlines flight just moments after the door plug tore off at 16,000 feet leaving a huge hole in the cabin. The haunting images here of what it was like in those rows closest to that opening to the sky. Here's ABC's Matt Rivers now. We need everyone to remain seated with their seatbelts fastened right now. 
Tonight, terrifying new video just moments after a chunk of this Boeing's fuselage broke off an Alaska Airlines flight 16,000 feet over Portland, Oregon, sending a howling, freezing wind over the 170 plus passengers in the now depressurized cabin. The stories from those passengers, harrowing. Passenger Kung Tran in the row behind the blowout, losing his socks, shoes, and cell phone, suffering bruises and a sprained ankle. Telling ABC News he thought he'd get sucked out feet first. And this 15-year-old boy had his shirt torn from his body as he was sitting across the aisle. And just a day after the FAA announced an investigation into whether Boeing failed to properly inspect its 737 MAX 9 aircraft, which remain grounded, the FAA today taking further action auditing the MAX 9's entire production line and all of its suppliers. And in a federal lawsuit, a former employee of Spirit Aerosystems, which manufactured the MAX 9 fuselage, alleging the company's products suffered from an excessive amount of defects. The company won't comment on pending litigation, but Boeing's CEO has confidence in Spirit Aerosystems. We're not going to point fingers there because, yes, it escaped their factory, but then it escaped ours too. David, tonight, still no timeline for the return of nearly 200 MAX 9s to duty. Investigators say they're continuing to look for the bolts that would have affixed the broken part of that fuselage to the rest of the plane. Both Boeing and Spirit Aerosystems say they will fully cooperate. David? Matt Rivers on this story tonight. Matt, thank you. We turn now to the case of that awful and deadly massacre at a Buffalo supermarket. Tonight, federal prosecutors now saying they will seek the death penalty in the hate crimes case against a white supremacist who killed 10 black people in Buffalo at the grocery store he visited several times before the attack. Here's our senior investigative correspondent, Aaron Katursky, from Buffalo tonight. Tonight, the Justice Department is pursuing the death penalty for Peyton Gendron, who carried out a racist massacre at a Buffalo supermarket in 2022. In their decision, federal prosecutors said Gendron picked the Topps Market in East Buffalo on purpose, driving more than 200 miles from home to maximize the number of black victims. He had scouted it in advance and live streamed the attack, prosecutors said, to incite violent action by others. Ten black people were killed in the attack, including Pearl Young. Today's decision to seek the death penalty doing nothing to diminish the pain of her daughter. Whatever decisions they made, it's not going to do anything in terms of what my heart needs. And my heart needs healing. Mark Talley's mother was Geraldine Talley. I would have preferred he spend the rest of his life in prison. Uh, suffering every day. I think he's getting off the hook getting the death penalty. Gendron is already serving a life sentence after pleading guilty to state charges last year when a man lunged at him in court. He will now be tried on federal hate crimes and weapons charges. The decision to pursue the death penalty was a first for the Biden administration, which has also imposed a moratorium on federal executions. Tonight, David, defense attorneys called it deeply disappointing. David, Aaron Katursky back in Buffalo for us on this. Aaron, thank you. We turn now to the race for the White House. Three days until the Iowa caucus is now with blizzard conditions and frigid temperatures. In Iowa, Ron DeSantis still campaigning. Nikki Haley having to hold her virtual events today because of the weather. Donald Trump isn't there. But Trump leads in the polls there by 30 points. And if he wins by that much, it would be historic. But of course, it all depends now on who shows up. Rachel Scott is there reporting from Iowa tonight. Tonight, this is what they're dealing with in Iowa. Blinding snow, impassable roads, a ferocious blizzard hitting the state. And with just three days to go until the caucuses, it's a potential game changer. Nikki Haley canceling all her in-person events today. But Ron DeSantis, who staked his entire campaign on a strong showing here, still out on the stump. I'll brave whatever we need to. I mean, nothing's handed to you in this life, much, much less a presidential nomination. So if you have to go and trudge through snow to be able to earn the vote, you trudge through snow to be able to earn the vote. In Ankeny, a few dozen people pushing through the dangerous cold to hear the Florida governor speak. I'm really impressed that so many people came out given the weather. Uh, we uh, are going to be, I'm going full speed ahead with whatever we have, but we want people to be safe. DeSantis has visited Iowa more than any of the major candidates. He's had 165 events, Haley 79. Donald Trump has only logged 35 stops, and he's the only candidate not here today. But still, Trump remains the far and away front runner. Tonight, all three campaigns focused on getting their supporters through the snow and to the caucus sites on Monday. It's going to be negative 28 wind chill. Um, and so what we hope is that they will wear layers, that they will bring their photo ID, and that they will come out and caucus. 
Trump is ahead by 30 points in this state. If that holds on Monday night, it will be the largest margin of victory for a Republican candidate in Iowa caucus history. But the Trump campaign is concerned with such a big lead, their supporters might get complacent and stay home, David. Well, you are not complacent. You are back there again tonight for us, braving the cold and the snow. Rachel, thank you for that. We continue with the news tonight. The Biden administration rolling out a new pathway to more student debt relief. The program fast tracks forgiveness for borrowers who took out $12,000 or less if they've been paying it back for 10 years now. Their payments will end next month. The administration did not say how many will benefit, but they say it will especially help community college and low income borrowers. When we come back here tonight, the U.S. Navy chopper crashing on a training mission, the race to uh, rescue crew members. There were six on board. Also tonight, Quaker Oats now expanding its recall from cereals to granola bars. We'll have more. And the new coach tonight for the New England Patriots already making history. Tonight, we're learning more about a U.S. Navy helicopter that crashed into San Diego Bay during a training mission last night. Six crew members were on board when the chopper went down. All six were rescued, the Navy tonight saying, due to the nature of the training, there was a safety boat right there in the area. No word on the cause. Tonight, authorities are back at the same intersection for the second time this week, a deadly train collision in Melbourne, Florida. This is the second fatal crash at the same railroad crossing. Authorities say two people were killed when a bright line train slammed into a pickup truck. Police say the driver had tried to go around the railway gates. The crash coming two days after another train hit a car at the same spot killing one person and injuring three others. When we come back tonight, the new warning from the CDC this evening about COVID, flu, and RSV. Also tonight, Bill Belichick's replacement already. And six sisters, one dream, who are our Persons of the Week. To the index of other news this Friday night, the new warning from the CDC about COVID, flu, and RSV. Health officials say roughly 1,500 people are dying from COVID every week in the U.S. More than 35,000 people were hospitalized last week alone, up for the ninth week in a row. 35 states reporting high or very high levels of respiratory illness. Tonight, Quaker Oats is expanding its recall of some granola bars and cereals because of possible salmonella contamination. The company now adding two dozen more products to the recall, including Quaker chewy granola bars, some Gatorade protein bars, and additional cereals and snack boxes as well. We have much more on our website for you tonight. This evening, just one day after parting ways with head coach Bill Belichick, the Patriots naming his successor, Gerard Mayo, the team's linebackers coach, former player and Super Bowl champ, of course, will now be taking over the team's first black head coach. And at just 37 years old, he'll be the youngest head coach in the league. The Patriots tonight calling it a new era in New England. When we come back here, six sisters taking every single step together, very close now to their dream, our Persons of the Week. Finally tonight here, six sisters, one dream, and their determination to see it through, our Persons of the Week. Tonight, the remarkable story of six sisters pursuing a singular dream, no matter what. For years now, the Lauren sisters have faced homelessness, at times sleeping in a car together, but all the while going to school, keeping their grades up, and staying focused on their dream. All of them want to become nurses. My name is Dominique, and I want to be a nurse. My name is Lauren, and I want to be a nurse. My name is Danielle, and I want to be a nurse. I'm Gabriella, and I want to be a nurse. My name is Alexandria, and I want to be a nurse. I'm Natalia, and I want to be a nurse. Gabriella remembering their early fears. How would they get their schoolwork done? We had nights that we were in a car, and we were calling around to figure out where we would be. Danielle on balancing homework in an unsteady home. We are like in this homeless situation, and I'm just like, Am I going to have to do my homework in a cardboard box or something? And Alexandria, like all of her sisters, still finding the moments to smile, even on winter mornings with no heat. It was hard to get out of bed because it was cold. It was freezing. So, yeah. like, we had blankets over each other and we'd wake each other up and be like, all right, you go first. <laughs> Tonight, all six sisters now completing their master's degree at SUNY Downstate Health Sciences University in Brooklyn. Yeah. This is their final semester then nursing school together at Adelphi University in Garden City, New York, a 20-month program. Tonight, all of them in their nursing uniforms already, taking us to class with a wave. Heading to the library. Studying together, overcoming challenge together, and Natalia tonight on why she's grateful. Really appreciate that we're in college and doing it together. We can use it to help others. Hey, David. And Gabriella and her message to anyone overcoming adversity. I just want to say to everybody, no matter where you are, what you're going through, use what you have and make the most of it. Bye, David. 
Well, we love that message, and so we choose the Lawrence sisters, the future nurses who've already achieved so much. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.